What are all the other settings inside the deck link control panel? Now these are settings which affect the deck link card in every single program you're using it in. So you know, I'm using it in Edius, but Blackmagic cards actually work in Premiere, they work in Avid, they work with a whole bunch of other programs, and this will affect the settings for every single program. So what have I got? Well, first of all, under the settings tab, obviously you've got the output and the input, which we've been through before. Then you've got a bunch of different tick boxes. Now again, most of these I just leave as they are. If you understand what these are, then you'll know whether you need to tick them or not. If you don't understand them, then don't tick them. Not a brilliant explanation, I have to say, but these are particular broadcast standards. So see, that's a setting that you use for America. That's a setting that you use for Japan and so on. There are things like, do you output 444 is full color space on the SDI when it's possible. You could tick that if you want to, but generally I find the best thing is just to leave it as it is. Now you might not necessarily have all of these options, on your capture card. It does vary from card to card. This is one that you might use, which it says use 1080p, not 1080psf. There are some times when you're outputting progressive footage or P footage, and you know, you really want to output it at the best possible resolution, which is exactly as it comes off the computer. But quite a few monitors can't cope with it. We've got a lot of HD screens, for example, I'm filming on a Black Magic Cinema camera myself, and that films at 25p. I found that actually quite a few of my HD screens can't read 25p, but they can read a slightly different format called PSF. And as a default, this is set to do PSF and not full blown 1080p. If I tick that, it's going to do full blown 1080p. So if you're doing, say, a 25p project and you can't see it on your output screen, try ticking that, see if it gets any better. Or if it is tricked, try unticking it and see if it works. Remove jitter when paused, pretty simple when you're playing a piece of video. If it's wobbling up and down because it's interlaced, well then that's ticked. It will just show you half a frame when you pause. If you untick that, it'll show you a wobbly picture when you pause. Default video standard. This, again, doesn't do very much, but I like to set it to a PAL one because I'm a PAL person. If I'm doing a lot of 1080 50i, I'll set it to that. If I'm doing a lot of standard def, then I'll set it to PAL and I'll leave it at that. It doesn't make a huge difference to the program at all. I quite like to set this one. Inside of Edius, it's going to show you whatever you can see. At this moment it's paused and I'm seeing the colour bars out there. But suppose I come out of Edius and go into another program, what stays on screen? It either goes black or it pops up the last frame. So if I say last frame, it's going to show me colour bars. Obviously in the 3D, you've got you know, what's coming out through the HDMI. Now inside of Edius, I'd set that in Edius rather than here. On the processing side, you can do things like take your output and then scale it on output. Or you can take the input and then scale it on input. Now the input stuff generally doesn't work inside of Edius. So you can't scale on input. And frankly, I'd never bother. When I have used this in other Blackmagic programs or in Premiere, I've not been that impressed with the picture quality, whereas the Edius scaling I think is very good. So I don't actually bother with any of that when it comes to Edius. Scaling on output, you might use because here you can take HD coming out of it and scale it to standard def. So you could be in an HD project, but you could actually output to a standard def screen if you wanted to. What you do is you say, right, let's take that HD and we'll make an HD picture out of it and an SD picture out of it. The HDMI and the SDI will show high def, the analog will show standard def. So you tick on that and now you've said, right, I want to downscale the output. Doesn't actually work until you click on that and come down to the bottom here and say enable conversion. So click on that once and now you know the conversion is going because it's ticked. Just choosing the format you want doesn't actually do the job. What you have to do is choose the format and make sure that's ticked. But equally well, if you're looking at the output from your Blackmagic Gizmo and you're saying, oh, it looks a bit rubbish, maybe you've actually left this on. Or maybe somebody's fiddled with your computer. So if it looks a bit rubbish, come in here, make sure that's not ticked and turn it off and then you're not scaling anything. All this stuff, again, I very, very rarely fiddle with these. It's the sort of stuff that if you know what it is, then you'll find it useful. And it doesn't appear on lots of the gizmos. And the video levels, I'm not coming in through analog, so I'm not going to be changing the brightness and the contrast and so on as it comes in. Again, I tend to capture it as is and then fiddle with it afterwards in Edius. As Edius has got a lot of nice tools for color correction and grading, so I tend to use those. And there's finally the audio levels. Now this particular card has got XLRs on it. If I'm using an XLR to photo converter, I have to tick that, otherwise I won't hear anything. If not, I'll just fiddle with these levels until it sounds good. Mainly, I just fiddle with these settings here, and it's these ones at the top. Those are the only ones I find very important.